Hey everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood gaming guy slash survivor buddy Gordon here. And you're probably asking yourself, Gordon, why are you whispering? Because it is late on a Wednesday night and I have a sleeping baby upstairs. So I just wanted to fill you in on what's going on here. Uh, the exit interviews were moved from Zoom to actual calls. So there's no video, it's all audio. Uh, and because it was a bit of a last minute scramble, I tried my best to record them, but the audio might not be that great. And if it isn't, I apologize. I'll do my best to boost it. Um, and uh, yeah, so we have the first three tonight, uh, our winner, our, our first runner up, our second runner up, and uh, tomorrow we're going to have the fourth and fifth, and those should be videos. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, if you like this content, or if you don't like this content, who cares? Uh, tap like, tap subscribe. It does us a huge favor. And uh, let's uh, see how Erica feels about her big win. Hi, Gordon. Erica, welcome to my hangout. I'm happy to be here. Oh, happy to have you here. Boy, uh, this is always the easiest interview to do because the person's in a great mood and it's instead of being like, why did you do this thing wrong? It's, why did you do this thing right? Oh my gosh, Gordon, I'm currently in a gown, wearing a crown, in a storage closet, but there's nowhere I'd rather be. You're in a storage closet? Yeah, I, I threw a big party for my friends and family in Toronto, but I flipped out the chat with you, so my current company is a cup of wine and a mopping bucket. Oh, I, I, I feel honored that I'm on the same level as uh, Mop and Bucket. Thank you so much. I mean, you worked hard for it. I did. Um, man, we have a Canadian Survivor champion. Yeah, we do. Oh, yeah, we do. And it, it's cool with me because awesome things from come from Canada. Uh, Trish Stratus, Bernicke Ladies, Kids in the Hall, and now our latest Survivor champ. You want to you wanna, wanna get into this? Let's do it. So when you learned the votes were being read right there, were you like, oh, crap, it's a tie? that he was going to hand Xander an hourglass? Oh, listen, I'm the only keeper of the hourglasses on this season, okay? <laughs> <laughs> he can hand Xander something else, but an hourglass is mine. Uh, my, uh, my Power Rankings partner and Survivor co-wrong champ, uh, Michelle Fitzgerald, uh, made an excellent point. She compared your win to her win, and I, I can totally see it, uh, where, you know, like, in the moment, uh, you know, your win might not make sense, but when you go back and look at it, it totally clicks. So... If I were to go back and watch the game, uh, when did you feel the tide turning that, you know, you had all the pieces in place to, to, to make a run for this thing and eventually win? I think for me, the real tide turning, and I think the tide turning for the entire game was when um, we did the 3-2, three, sorry, the 3-3-2 three, three, vote for Shan. Because up until that point, it was clear that um, Shan had a chokehold on a few people in the game. But um, once, after the first merge vote, I really focused on building relationships with the folks who either were the underdogs or who I could tell really wanted power and I could position myself as someone who could be an ally in their pursuit of power. And when it came time for that vote, I felt like it was really time to sow the seeds um, and to make kind of this flip over of the power happen. And once I was able to use my both my new connections and my old connections to come up with this vote that protected the alliance with myself, Xander, Picard, and Heather, and it happened successfully, I thought, all right, the, the, the um, tables have turned here, and I think it's time for me to really be the dark horse to take this whole thing. Now, um, my opinion of your game changed after my exit interview with Danny last week, where I thought, you know, Xander, you know, he's this likable kid. He's, he's going so far with this idol in his pocket, which I find uh, very impressive. He says, that, you know, that, that people are finding Xander's, um, you know, when he does things like steps down for the rice or when he offered to let you compete in the challenge, they're, they're seeing that as disingenuous. Um, and to me that I was like, oh, you know, if, if people don't appreciate Xander and are appreciating Erica, she has a, a chance to win this thing. Um, why, why, why do you think, and, and maybe, it's, maybe it's going back to the Michelle comparison where she was on a tribe that dominated early too, so we didn't get to see her that much. 
So what, what was going on that we didn't see that would help people appreciate your win more? Oh, I didn't think I was going to be on the defense, Gordon. No, no, no. No, no, I'm, I absolutely, like, hey, if you get the votes, you're the winner. That's, that's my rule. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just saying, like, what, what kind of things did we not see that w- would help people understand? Yeah, I mean, the, the perspective I had going into the game was one of um, someone who worked as a communications manager for almost 10 years. So really that career was built on building reputation. And the reality is that building reputation, there's a lot of small um, steps that can be taken to build credibility um, that aren't necessarily the flashiest, that aren't necessarily the loudest, but there are little things that you can do um, to kind of get people to think, oh, this girl's all right, and then eventually have those things that they like you. And on the flip side about building credibility, um, if you make a big mistake, uh, then you can totally tear down that credibility so quickly. So an example would be the Deshaun truth bomb. A little sorry, love you, Deshaun. But I think that people don't realize there's so many little things that you do to win Survivor that don't that aren't necessarily easy stories to tell on camera. So, you know, when I would talk to um, different players in the game, I feel like I would honestly make myself sound so stupid and say like every other word to kind of um, lower my threat level. Mm -hmm. Or even the relationship that I had with Xander. He and I actually talked about going to the end with each other, uh, many votes ahead of the final floor decision. And the way that I always positioned our relationship was we're equal, we played different games, but we're really similar, we're neck and neck. And I feel like that reasoning like, didn't resonate with him when you see on the show he said he didn't want me to get to the end because he didn't want me to have um, this extra move that can be him. So I think that there's so many little things that you can do to build credibility and also to kind of build your reputation as someone who is smart but also who isn't a big threat. Um, it, it, it's harder to tell that story. It's really it's harder to tell that subtle um, tactful, strategic story, um, but I did it. Uh, we do a, a word association here to get to know your tribe mates a little bit better. Uh, I'll give you someone's name, give me the first word or couple words that pops into your head, and uh, let's start okay. Let's start off with Sydney. Sydney. It has to just be Sydney because I don't think there's any other word that does her justice. Oh, there was, there's one word she used a lot in her interview that, that uh, makes me think of her a lot, but I won't repeat it because I, I don't want to have to bleep it out. Oh. Oh, yeah, that was that word. Uh, the mo- most bleeps e- this season easily. Um, bless her heart. Uh, let's try uh, Shan. Manipulative. Danny. Static. Evie. Brilliant. Tiffany. Joke. Uh, Ricard. Opportunistic. Okay. Heather. Loyal. Uh, Xander. Ambitious. Nasir. Uh, and let's finish off with Deshaun. Oh, Deshaun. Deshaun is maturing. Okay. Uh, now, I've done the word association with a lot of your castmates, and one term came up from you for you frequently. Do you know what that term was? Uh, I think that is the title of a Britney Spears song. It, uh, it is. That's right. They uh, called you baby one more time. Uh, yeah. They... <laughs> I mean, I did look quite young. They called you toxic. Uh, no, the, the, obviously <laughs> the, the term was lucky, uh, which in a game where idols are and advantages are coming out of every orifice of Jeff Probe's body, like why? How are you the one that's lucky? I guess is what I was getting at. Like, what, what do you? What is your response when you, when you hear that? Yeah, I think that. So it's interesting. I think that often when you watch Survivor, a lot of the fandom really prioritizes certain traits in players, right? It's those people who are willing to get up um, and. Uh, be very physical and, and grab the attention. There are people who are very, who are always in the pursuit of having control. And I think when you look at the way that Survivor 41 was designed with all of these twists and um, all of the risk that was associated with the twist, so people need to get up and decide that they're going to go climb up this hill um, and, I don't know, potentially get a reward. Um, and then when I look at the way that I decided to play the game where I didn't really want to be the one to make these checks and have people think that I had an advantage, 
and I knew how I was perceived and I kind of know where I stand um, based on my life experience so I didn't really care about appearing to have control. I think that honestly I think in a few ways the way that Survivor 41 was designed it was almost like someone like me wasn't intended to win but in spite of all that this person who strategically, subtly, and tactfully made their way through the game um, ended up winning. Um, so I think that, you know, it's easy to feel a type of way about someone like that winning a game that was chock full of twists, but I won, and it wasn't luck. Okay. Um, it, speaking of the, the word association, Heather got a lot of negative comments, and I just was interested in, in what the, you know, coming from somebody who seems to know her very well, uh, you know, what do we need to know about Heather? Heather is a wonderful and loyal friend. I think that with someone like Heather, she she is who she is. She wears her heart on her sleeve. And I think that there's so much greatness to that because she truly does love and care about, about people. I think that also with that, um, you know, Heather, you know, Heather, she, she's a normal person. There's good and there's bad to her. But I think that what's wonderful about Heather is that if somebody um, points something out to her that might have been a blind spot, uh, she's willing to own it and to take it back and learn from it. Or there are times where Heather would ask me for honest feedback, and I would tell her, like sometimes she would ask me, like, do you think I talk a lot? And I would say, yes. And she would be appreciative of my honesty. Um, so Heather is someone who, who knows that there's so much good to her and knows that there are things that are left for her to learn. And she's always so open to learning. And truly, one of my greatest gifts on Survivor was having somebody like Heather who is out there with me because it's this game where you don't know, you know who you could trust. It, um, it really puts a lot of value on like, backstabbing people and all of that. But well, the whole time I was out there, I knew that with Heather, there was someone who truly, truly loved me as a person and cared about me, and I know that I could cry and I couldn't be judged, or I knew that I could, we could ask each other to help the other to get dressed, and we knew that we had each other. So I think that she's honestly a wonderful person, and I'm totally going to stay her friend forever. Tribal council usually takes about two hours. They show us, you know, five or six minutes or whatever. Mm -hmm. A final tribal takes longer. I imagine it must be very stressful. Was there a point during the proceedings where you were like, I got this? Because you didn't just win by a vote or two. I think Deshaun was the only person that got a, you know, one vote. So was there a moment where you're like, I think I got this? Yeah. So going into tribal council, I'm taking my communications manager experience with me. So often when you're a communications manager, you prepare people to enter into hostile interview situations where there's potentially legal implications if you say something wrong. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go in, I'm confident in myself, I'm going to read the room and see who is at risk of getting sued. And truly, after the first question that was asked, um, I saw the, the way that the jury responded to Xander. I saw the way that the jury responded to Deshaun, and I saw the way that the jury responded to me, and I saw them nodding in agreement. I didn't see anybody trying to poke holes through anything I was saying, and I thought, oh man, if I stand this course, I have got this. So pretty early on in tribal council, I felt like it was my game to lose. Now, when uh, this, you might not know this, but traditionally uh, it's expected that the Survivor champion will buy gifts uh, for the Survivor Press. Have you figured out yet, um, you know, what I can, what I could expect? Oh my gosh, Gordon, I wish you had told me I would have brought something on this call. Um, but I think in celebration of um, being the first Canadian winner of Survivor, I would love to buy you a Canadian snack. So let me know if you're a sweet or a salty person and I can figure out the best thing to get you. Okay, a, a salty Canadian snack. That, that, that's that's uh, on your, now that you're a millionaire, that's on your to buy list. Okay, it has to be Ruffles All Dressed Chips. Okay, deal. See, like, and, and it's, uh, you, you, you're expecting something extravagant. No, I can, like, I can be bought very cheaply. I'm telling you, like, these chips are extravagant. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm eagerly anticipating them. Uh, Erica, you know, that, that, you know, we're running out of time. Like, uh, it's just fantastic. Like I said, like, 
Danny really opened my eyes last week with what was going on, and I was like, she can do this. She, uh, I, I'm really like I like I said, I'm interested to go back and, and pick out you know all the things I missed the first run through, and, and congratulations. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, it's just fantastic. I can't wait for my chips. <laughs> thank you, Gordon. Yeah, DM me your contact info. Let's make it happen. And honestly, thank you so much for everything you do for Survivor. All right, well, have a great night. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks, Gordon. Give my best to the mop. <laughs>